Share Shootout brought to you by Lion of Africa Insurance, insuring South Africa's future. We did promise that it was going to be back-breaking, brutal, manipulative, fly and straight-up mean, and we are living up to that promise. I'm Bruce Whitfield, this is Share Shootout, league only on CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. Now, did Oscar Pistorius really sign up for drama school over the Easter holidays, and was the fire starter at the Becker-style voting station merely looking for a place to bry his voice? And Leon Kikinis, chief executive of African Bank, is a bright guy, but how long can even he keep the African Bank faith? Now, we don't know the answer answers to any of these groundless questions. What we do have is the SSO League, the Share Shootout League. It gets hotter by the week and we want to take a look at the results from last week's match between The One and Chi Town and how those impacted the league standing. So if you have a look at the lead, at the top is Sid the Maverick, Chris the Scott, uh, Gary running dog and Matthew who is Chi Town. Those are the three leaders at the top of our leaderboard. It will get a lot more interesting and a lot more challenging as time goes by. And at the bottom we don't have anything for Levan for Nick the value guy, for Neo who goes by the one, the one who hasn't won anything yet and of course K-Live who is Clive Ramatimela Smith of course is one of today's contestants he's sitting on a big fat zero but he did have a bye in the first round so in his first appearance Clive Ramatimela Smith from Kunzi Investments is going head to head with the independent analyst head of the leaderboard Sid Vianello for his chance to join the top dogs at the top of this log my name is Clive Ramatibela Smith and I am the Chief Investment Officer of Inkunzi Investments. Uh, my investment philosophy is keeping to the fundamentals of investing, so keeping it simple and straightforward, stick to the basics and make sure that uh, you create a formidable traction from that. My game plan for the league is to make fun of everybody else and make sure that they get embarrassed at the end of the show so that I can win simply because I get public uh, preference. My biggest competition in the show, and it has nothing to do with investment philosophy at all, it would be Gary, uh, simply because he's tall and big, and I'm terrified of him. I don't stand a chance, I'm going to win the league, because I feel that I've got the right criteria uh, and the right material to make sure that I win the league. I, am, uh, I qualify better on the BEE scorecard, so I hope that will help. <laughs> I'm an independent investment analyst and investment advisor. I like looking at themes. I devise themes to suit the particular investment climate and I try investing in companies which fit into whatever theme I believe is appropriate for the, um, for the business cycle at any one particular time. At this point, I don't have a game plan. Um, this is the first time I'm in the competition and I would say I would probably end up devising a game plan as we move along and as I get a feel of how things are developing. At this stage I would simply say Sasha simply because he's the longest serving member on the, on the team and he is a very experienced and very successful investment advisor in his own right. I wouldn't have entered if I didn't think I had a good or a reasonable chance of winning it. At the end of the day, it is a game and we all get to have fun, but deep down, we all want to win it as well. So time now for the house rules. Both of our guests have pre-picked three shares. Neither knows what the other holds, but each must accept at least one of their competitors' picks. And the longer they leave it, the more likely they are to have to accept something they really don't like. Each has got 30 seconds to argue their stock picks, and stock pickers can choose from any one of the JSE's top 100 companies. They're also limited to an international stock pick per round from selected global markets. Now that we know the rules are, let's let the games begin. Sid, you took Sasha the most frightening person allegedly on the show, and you dealt him a six-love, six-love, six-love uh, match win. You whacked him. Was Sasha really that scary? No. It, it, I think I said that because this was the first time. I mean, that was my first appearance, and I didn't know what to expect. Perhaps it was a bit of beginner's luck, but certainly he gave Sasha a big uh, blood nose. You, however, Mr. Ramatibela Smith, Clive, nice to see you as well. You had a buy in the first round. Yep. <coughs> this is your first game in Absolutely. this particular round. So as a result, I think you should go first. Right. Um, and I would like to know why you're going all boozy on me. In the next 30 <laughs> seconds, I would like, please, 
uh, a view on Distel. 30 seconds start now. It is a fantastic company. I love the management. I love the way they've, they've built the South African landmark. Last year did a really good job in the UK and the rest of Europe in terms of sales. And I look at them just yesterday, no, right, Tuesday, they were looking very, very strong. And I'm, I'm hoping that they will continue their sentiment right through the end of the year. One thing that uh, is particularly nice about them is that they give you a nice alternative to SAB Miller and their very strong balance sheet is a win for me. Okay, your 30 seconds not yet up. I'm going to ask you a question then. Um, uh, SAB Miller's got a big stake in them, 25% or thereabouts. It is 25%. What is happening to that stake, the SAB Miller stake? That, at some point, you've got to think that SAB Miller will want to sell that. They will probably do that, but the most important thing is strategic is because of the, the, the wine sector, which is very, very strong. So if you look at, for example, the rest of Europe, they're going into China as well. Yep. And because there's a great taste for wine in China uh, quite recently, because we, the, more, the more wealthy you become, you actually have a more expensive taste. Uh, so I'm uh, hoping that growth story does, does continue as well. Because like you drink French wine as well. <laughs> well. Uh, I, I, actually, I actually don't, don't think that breweries are going to sell their stake. Firstly, okay. yeah. Rushton. Is, yes. is a breweries man who's just been who just come in as the new CEO. Interesting, the first guy so the new to run that, the is new CEO, in, right? yes. but he's for the first time the new CEO hasn't been drawn from the Stellenbosch clan. That's true. He's a complete outsider, and m my thinking is and was and still is that he's there for a reason. And it's not that SAB are going to ditch that stake. Okay, well, which is good because then you don't have the risk of an overhang, um, which, which is nice. So there's nice upside there. I like the fact that they've gone in and bought uh, the French Cognac House Bisky. I like the fact that they own the whiskey label Buna Havina. I was recently going through Heathrow and there it is in duty free being sold. It's a, it's a big international whiskey brand. They're diversifying from somewhere just Amarula, which has been very successful. Yeah, absolutely. For them, and, all and doing these good things, global but stuff. I, I do not buy the stock at all. Why not? Okay. I'll tell you why. Because the, the core business of Distel is brandy. Mm -hmm. Brandy in South Africa is on a downward track. They're under threat from, from it's the under Department threat of Health, which wants a, to well, cancel these advertisers. That. It's not only that. Its share of the total drinks market has been in decline. And I see they've been doing all these things to try and, to try and kind of stabilize it, mm -hmm. and it doesn't appear to be working. To me, it's still going backwards. Secondly, the whiskey business they bought in Scotland, it's a great business. But the entire acquisition was paid with debt, South African denominated debt. Yeah. If interest rates go up and they're going to, my, yeah. my call is they're going to go up in this country, the cost of the debt is going, to, is going to rise tremendously and may turn out to cost them a lot more than what any currency benefit may give them over time, given the fact that you can't claim the interest against the profits of the business in Scotland because they domiciled in two different countries. I must push pause on said on that point. Respond please to the fact that they're not going to grow their brands, they're not going to grow their brands portfolio, the brands are declining and then we will need to talk about the debt issue. Brands first. First and foremost, very important to have brands because if, you look, if you're going to be going against the likes of the SAB and their stable uh, and what they have there, you have to have a powerful brand. And we know advertising is very, very important in that particular area. But if but the Department of Health wins its battle and bans alcohol advertising, you have, a, you have dominant brands in their segments. You don't have rivals coming in. But how do you entice people to drink clippies and coke out of a clear uh, a clear glass bottle. Because they're a part of the South African culture and that people will not stop drinking clippies yeah, but and cola. Being, but being part of a culture is one yeah. thing, yeah. but the culture is changing because brandy demand has been in decline. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I used to own the stock. I'll be quite frank. I used to own the stock and I'm I sold it. I'm glad you said that. No, that's a point for me. And I sold it. <laughs> and I sold it. Yeah. Okay. Based, based on the thesis I've just given you. Okay, on, the debt, on the debt issue, debt, I think please. that if you, got, if you can control your, your... There's nothing wrong with debt. It's controlling it and making sure that you can actually pay, pay back at the end of the, of, of, of the term. So my, my response to that is that they wouldn't have taken the debt if they don't think that they can replace it. And I've got confidence in that this business will be able to do that. Okay. No, no. He's confident. He remains confident. You need to make a call. Accept it or shoot it down. No, shoot it down. Shoot it down. <laughs> uh, clearly and easily, not even with a whisper or a whimper. Let's yeah. move on to you then, Sid Vianello. Mr. Maverick, the independent analyst. I like this company. I think, however, it is too expensive. In 30 seconds, I'd like to know why you think City Lodge is a good bet right now. Very simply, when City Lodge listed, their philosophy was to own their properties. They still own virtually all their properties, save for a few airport ones, which means they protect it against any increases in rentals. I increases in revenue goes straight to the bottom line. Secondly, they've expanded into Africa. The Kenyan business is doing very well for them, and they're going to expand more into Kenya. And thirdly, you've got the, um, the impact of the weak rand 
through improved tourism, which will, which will enable them to increase their market share. Do tourists come to South Africa to stay at City Lodge? Some do. Enough. Some do. do enough. Well, it's, it's, not about, mm. it's not about enough. It's about increasing your occupancy. But they, the get, they get great occupancy. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, no, no, fantastic no. occupancies no, no, no. for City occupancies Lodge. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, correct. boom. Occupancies no are lower than what they were five years ago. They're sitting, what, 60 No, 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 percent? they're about 70 odd. But I can tell you 10 years ago, the occupancies were way in the 80s. Yeah. I'm not saying they can go back into the 80s. But I'm saying that affordable hotels for business people is always going to be a good business sure. for them. But they need and to work out that weekend thing. Mm. No, no, absolutely. But remember, th the company's been around 20-something mm. years, and they've clearly done extremely well over this entire period of time to have worked it out in some or other manner. But is it worth 19 times last year's earnings? Well, has, has the PE ever been lower than where it is now? Good point. Don't know much about it, hospitality industry, but I can tell you two things. That I'm he stays only at, at the Cape Grace. Absolutely. Yeah, the Cape Tony. Yeah, no, 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 you, you know, you're, you're going against very tough competition. And, and what, 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 what I think is that, you know, with uh, the recent um, uh, American company coming to South Africa as well, buying massive yeah, by, by project, project hotels, project and hotels and, yeah. they're going to be diversifying, they're going to be doing much greater. The tourism industry in a whole for the, for the next two, three years is going to be struggling in South Africa. Because I've I got to disagree with you on that point. Okay. Why is the tourism industry in South Africa going to be struggling? We're 18 to the pound. Yeah. The Poms are lining up oh, right. at Heathrow, oh, right. begging and gagging to come <laughs> out. I dispute whether or not they go to City Lodge, whether right. the brand is strong enough yes. in, in those markets um, to, to really capture that tourist market. But the tourist market has got to grow in this weak round environment. I mean, it's, it, it always it, happens in the cycle. Oh, well, right. that's part of my thesis. Mm. I, mean, that, yeah. I mean, that's a fundamental part of the thesis. Yeah. But will the Brits want to go to a City Lodge? It's not a, There's nothing you know, wrong with it. Tourism, it's tourism better than travel lodge and the business. junk they've got remember, in the UK. But remember, if tourism isn't your core business and, yeah. we start at, yeah. and we start at zero, and we go from zero to one or zero to two. Every tourist is, is money every, to the bottom line. It's incremental business. It yeah. takes my occupancy from 69 to 71 or 71 to 73. Remember, all of that goes to the bottom line. Yep. I own virtually all my properties. The, the revenue I get goes straight virtually. I buy it. I buy it. He, however, I doubt it. I it's the it. McDonald's of the hotel industry. They own the properties. Um, do you like it? No, I don't. And I right. think that there's far more greater competition and better um, uh, uh, competition out there than they do. You're shooting it down? I sh shoot it down. I do love the conviction. I know nothing about this company, he starts yeah. off saying, but I shoot it down because I know nothing about the company. But yeah. that's it's conviction, and we like conviction, Clive. Absolutely. We like conviction. If everybody agreed on everything, we wouldn't have a mark. Precisely. Ah. <laughs> Precisely. Um, so, Clive, yeah, you're using your offshore allowance this evening, which is nice to see. Yes. One of the world's <coughs> biggest insurance companies. Indeed. AIG, listed in the United States. This is your one offshore opportunity in 30 seconds. Tell me why you like AIG. NASDAQ, absolutely great. And I think that the fact that they've got, uh, they've got great exposure. The biggest mistake was to sponsor the worst football club <laughs> in the world. But other than that, the diversity is very, very good. And they, if you look at their share, their insurance capital versus what they've got, it is actually brilliant. It's about 60, 70%, which is fantastic. I'd like to see them do more in Africa. And I think that's what, they, what the South African entity is going to do, is for them to expand into the African context. And there's far more um, uh, happening also in the Asian market as well. So love them a lot. I love their pricing. And I like the fact that uh, at the moment, with the, where they're sitting with, with, it, with the... Uh, there we I'll go. Keep quiet. AIG, do we you're like not, it? You're not worried about the fact that the results came out two days ago and were 20% down no. because of higher claim costs. But, but, that, but that would be expected, though, Sid. That would be expected because what, what they've just paid, you know, for the banks and, and for JP Morgan's uh, flaws and what they've done th within that sector. So no, 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 I'm just, I, I'm just trying, to be, devil, I'm trying to be devil's advocate. Uh, I like the devil. The yeah. devil is my friend. Yeah. And um, it just so happens that I own the stock and yeah. I have owned it for a, quite some time. Yeah. And... I haven't sold it, and I did not sell it when the results came down, and mm -hmm. I have no intention of selling it. Why, why do you have no intention of selling it? Because the global insurance sector is an interesting one, because we have greater incidences of um, regulatory issues. We've got greater yes. incidences of global weather patterns which are changing. Um, they can price it in, AIG, of course, and they can change it. AIG, if Tell you look why. at the history of the company over the last 10 years, it's been through all those all those regulatory issues. Mm -hmm. It had to recapitalize itself yep. because it was technically bankrupt. Yes. It, it nearly, went, it nearly went bust in the financial crisis. Well, absolutely. Yes. And, and I think that kind of shocked them into called it coming back to reality. And they've got a very sound business today. And if you ask me, because you're going to ask me whether I take it or I leave it, 
I'm happy to buy it. You're happy to buy it? I'm very happy to buy it. Despite the fact that they uh, they're, they're sponsor the worst happy. football team in the world. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're they're really their much. judgment has got to be called into question for sponsoring <laughs> Manchester United, don't they? You know, all teams in sport have good times and bad times. Oh. It doesn't mean that Man United is going to be I, the I shocking performer that it is forever in a day. At least we know they're insured. <laughs> <laughs> we know the Look shirts at this are great covered. team called Liverpool. Called Liverpool. Yes. I keep on calling it Littlewoods because the late John Moores was, was the major shell in yes. the company when he yeah. was alive. But I mean, I mean, the great team, Liverpool, was supposedly going to win the league and it looks like Man City is about to win it. Anyway, so uh, football is beyond my pay grade. Uh, I will, I will uh, tell you, Clive, that you've been accepted on AIG. So your international stock pick this evening, uh, which doesn't bode well then for the JSE's pick. Sid Vianello, independent analyst. City Lodge was shot down. Yeah. Um, the chief executive of, of Tiger Brands has been in a spot of bother with activist shareholders from the APSA board, from the Barclays Africa board, because he didn't attend too many of their meetings. Because You know why he didn't attend own. Because he was too busy running his own business. We're too I'm busy quite happy that he should carry on running his own business. He's too busy trying to figure out what's going on in Nigeria. In 30 seconds, I would like to know why you still like Tiger Brands. Very simply, it's, it's Africa's leading food manufacturer. Secondly, all its major brands are number one or number two in each of the categories where they operate. Number three, you know, I, I spoke about themed investing. I like the theme of going into Africa. What I like about Tiger is that instead of trying to take unknown brands into Africa, they bought businesses in Africa with brands that people know. If they make the brands better, they run them more efficiently, they market them better, they package them better, they will have a sound uh, business right across about, are, you, are you talking about Tiger Brands or SAB Miller? Because that's precisely yeah. what SAB well, Miller that's has what done well, that's going, what, going into emerging markets, well, that's taking what Tiger, Tiger Brands and, yeah, but and The difference is SAB, in many cases, have taken their existing brands like Castle sure, into Africa. Sure and they've done a very good job of marketing them. In the case of Tiger, instead of taking, let's call it tastic rice, it's not the intention to market, sure. you know, to manufacture rice in Africa, but instead of taking a South African brand to try and promote it in Africa, it's buy business in Africa with existing brands and make money more money out of those brands. And the question is whether or not they paid too much for those brands. And that is the question, Clive. I mean, Peter, uh, Peter McClary is being torn apart by many analysts and mm. saying he's overpaid for, for the Nigerian assets. Um, we're talking about one brand. One we're, brand. Talking about Dan, Abs- we're talking about, about Dan Goethe. Goethe. And no, the flour okay. mills. Dan Goethe's expertise is clearly is making cement. Yes. Yeah. And, not, um, and not making and flour. Not making food. Uh, <laughs> g- give, give me a sense of whether or not you'll take Tiger Brands. It, no, it's come under a huge amount of flack in recent times. It, it has. It has. But, but the important thing is that here for me, uh, long-term investing, very, very critical because it's talking about food yeah. and such products. And so we're not going to uh, have people stopping to eat, as you can see. And this is going to continue on. And, <laughs> and, for, and it'll be very At difficult. At least he's honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> there's some things that you can lie about and other things that it's just pointless <laughs> trying to consider. <laughs> Wrap it up. So I'm very, very happy to, to, buy, to buy Tigers and, 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 and do, do love the African growth story because as the, the middle class continues to grow yeah. in, in Africa, you're going to have people, uh, consumers, buying more and more food. And if they've got well-positioned and well-packaged uh, products within those markets, they'll, they should be doing well. There we go. So you'll take it? I will take it. There we go. So we've had uh, one take each from our contestants this evening. Remember, it's up to you to decide who wins this match. In order to do so, no, you can't interrupt. No, no. Uh, Sorry, are, are we allowed more than one take. You're not, uh, you, you can take more than one take, oh, you can. but then you will be voted against oh, because um, oh, our, our viewers demand that you are ingenious and okay. inventive okay. and you okay. create I'm just, a space. I'm just checking. No, no, Conviction. You, you can accept all three if you like, but then you're going to lose the game. <laughs> um, you follow at SSO League if you're not interrupted by Sid and you vote for either hashtag KLive that is, of course, Clive Ramatabella Smith or Maverick, who is Sid Vianello, and decide who should win this round. It's entirely up to you. Let's go into a short break before we get to the guest's final stock picks and we see if Sid does back Clive's second pick, in which case you should vote against him because he needs to think. You can't just have it easy on this show.
You're watching Share Shoot our League right here on CBC Africa, the only league that doesn't have goalposts. Remember, this is match day five. We will have a look at how last week's match impacted the current league standings. Let's just look very briefly at the top four on this list. Sid the Maverick, Chris the Scott, uh, Gary Running Dog and Matthew who is Shy Town. Those are the three leaders at the top of our leaderboard. So yeah, that's where we are and let's move on to the rest of the show this evening. Sid, I'm going to make you go first uh, because you're going to use your offshore allowance now. For um, the first time. Uh, for the first time. You're to use it every single week if you would like to. I can't wait to see how Clive Ramatibeta Smith shoots this one down because I think it's going to be incredibly difficult. In 30 seconds, Jack Welsh, the most legendary chief executive in the world, um, General Electric's been through some tough mm. times, but I'd like to know in 30 seconds why you think it's got a bright future, Mr. Edison. I tell you, very simply, because Jack Welsh isn't there anymore. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Immelt is running the business. It's the world's largest infrastructure company. And Imelt has focused the company in three core areas, which are great for the emerging markets as well as the developed markets. Energy and gas, transportation and medical equipment. They obviously do a lot of other things, a lot of other areas, but they are reducing the exposure into, in the capital, in the G, uh, um, uh, uh, GE capital business, redeploying the cash and in at those that point, three areas. You have to cut it off. There we go. I dare you. Shoot it down. The only reason why you would want to have this is because probably Sid was there when there was no electricity. So maybe that's oh, the reason nice. why he chose this one. But to be honest with you, with green energy, with more companies coming out, green tobacco, also Chinese uh, manufacturing company, very, very strong. I don't see how they will keep the same momentum for the next 10 years because I don't think you will keep the lights on for that long. There we go, Sid, a response to that? Very simply, part of that core business is in fact green energy. They are one of the biggest players in the world in green energy. Not, not those aspects of green energy where China is undercutting people and is manufacturing cheaply, but in other areas of green energy. And they're focusing heavily on gas. And of course, as you know, with the gas discoveries in, mm. in Africa, plus the ones in America, this is a huge, huge, huge growth area for, the, for um, power generation, using gas instead of coal and things like that. Okay, Those so are General, the areas General Electric, uh, uh, Thomas Edison's company, still going strong. Mm -hmm. You believe it will still go strong for the next 10 years. Absolutely. Clive, you've got to do better than that. Because and you know why? Because they're going to continue manufacturing washing machines and things like that, which they still make Absolutely. to this the day. Good old they the will still be stuff. making them in 10 years' time. <laughs> the, the, the good old-fashioned stuff. Clive, I'm sorry, I don't buy your shoot down. <laughs> and electric I, bulb. I, and electric bulb. And electric bulbs. <laughs> And what's going to be on the LED ones? ones. Oh, LED ones. Come on, oh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? <laughs> you, you secretly, you really do like it, don't you? I do secretly like it, and I'm not going to. I'm not. My fans are watching this. I cannot. Con <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> All two of them. All two of them. Sorry, so, three. I, uh, I missed out one. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> long story short, very simple. They've, they've, had, they've had the lights on for too long. The next 10 years is going to be strategically very important how they position the business. And there are a lot of better and cheaper producers out there that do look more attractive. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that by shutting him down that he'll be able to keep the lights that long. And okay. I'll be able to. Win. You'll be shot down that way. Sid, oh, I think well. I think he's I think he's lying, frankly. Um, I think he secretly <laughs> likes it, and he's probably got some stuff to wear somewhere. Just just remember those, every aircraft that you that you fly in. Virtually all of them have got a GE engine in them. Yeah. So, so if it's not a Rolls Royce if, engine, if, if, G, G, if G is in closing down, well then we'll have no more aircraft in ten years. Time. We'll have Rolls Royce. We'll be <laughs> fine. And okay. the Malaysian aircraft. There we go. No, no, no. <laughs> that wasn't an engine Did, thing. Didn't it was, have a GE engine. We still don't know though. We still don't know. <laughs> I would like to know in thirty seconds, please, Clive Ramit about Smith. You're going local um, and a little bit global. Uh, Thirty billion rand market cap, PE ratio of ten. <laughs> the reason why it's cheap is because Sid is worried that interest rates are going up. You're going into the property sector. I know he's going to shoot you down. <laughs> to have your best go. 30 seconds on Redefine. Love Redefine, love the CEO, love the management side, but the most important thing is that even if interest rates are going up, yes, the property market, the rental side most specifically, is going to be the most profitable for the next uh, three to five years. And that's what I believe. So they've got very good properties, they've got nice uh, uh, retail properties, we're talking about the malls and, and so forth and so on, and those are going to be very critical in the next three to five years for me, and that's why I believe that they should go in it. At 10 PE, I think you do know that that is a very much attractive stock, uh, attractive stock to go into. At there we go. 30 seconds are up. You're going to shoot him down on interest no, rates. No, absolutely. It's, it's, it's an interest rate story. Yeah. 
Right now, I don't want to be in property stocks because I know that there's a, a distinct correlation, negative correlation between interest rates and the valuation of property stocks. You saw it in the last few weeks, mm. the last few months. And I think with interest rates not going up a half a percent, but I think there's a lot more to come, maybe another one, one and a half percent to come over time. I don't see property stocks going anywhere. They may not go down. Yeah. And, and, the the fundament and the fundamentals, the bad news is anticipated. And the fundamentals the of the of Redefine, yeah. of Growth Point, all of them, the fundamentals are really good. Yeah. But if the share price, in my view, because I've got to make an investment decision, is going to go nowhere, What's the then point? then I'm not going to invest in it. I might, I might as well, as my as my good friend Marcus used to used to tell me, "Don't sit, sit here, your health in the post contour." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the last place he'll be. He's put his money in the last couple of years. Marcus, did you understand that? Like, would you like subtitles? <laughs> 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 that's very impressive. By a donkey. Okay, quit while you're ahead. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> redefine. Last chance to justify it. This is the reason why. This is why I find this particularly interesting from Sid. He goes and there goes in City Lodge and, and, and gives all the nice things about the property industry and the hospitality industry and how that's going to be. Right. And I go redefine and he redefines my, my stock. I don't understand him. Please explain that to me. It's very because, simple. Because hotel economics are very different from property. From property my hotel economics. properties are owned outright. Yes. I, I have, it, I have no right. debt against them. Yeah. Right. And redefine has quite a bit of debt against its properties. Mm -hmm. Re and the market values redefine based on an interest rate factor. Hotels are not valued on the base of movements in interest rates. Fair enough. But I think you shot down. I am shut down. No, I am shot down. Shot down. I well, said so at the outset. Yeah, well, I said so before he even <laughs> pitched his stock because I kind of know the way this man thinks. I'm learning anyway. Uh, this is Share Shootout League on CNBC Africa, of course. Welcome to the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. This being Match Day 5, you've got to decide who is going to be the winner between these two fine contestants. Should it be Clive Ramatibella Smith, who, let me tell you what he chose, Distel, AIG and Redefine Properties. AIG taken with open hands and... Uh, he was certainly uh, Sid likes uh, AIG very much, but Distel and Redefine shot down in a ball of flame. Sid Vianello, City Lodge, Tiger Brands, and General Electric. Uh, uh, the uh, Clive Ramatibella Smith, he shot down City Lodge. He accepted Tiger Brands and secretly, I think, really wanted to know that he could take the, uh, General Electric, but just trying to play a strategic game. Now, I'm not allowed to vote because they took the power away from me. Uh, it's something to do with the democracy, apparently. The democracy is in your hands. If you didn't Listen go to, to the this. polls and vote in South Africa's elections, this is your opportunity to make good. We're going to be tallying up your votes until midnight on Sunday. So let us see who is going to be the winner. The viewers will decide whether or not it will be Sid the Maverick or whether it will be Clive Ramatabella Smith, of course, who goes by the hashtag KLive. It is up to you to vote. Until recently, Sid didn't even have a Twitter account. Uh, but he has one now. But he has one now. What is your Twitter handle? Siddles1000. Pardon? 1000 years. Siddles1000. S-I-D-D-E-L-S-1000. Siddles1000 versus K Live. You've got to vote for one of these two gentlemen. That is the match day done and dusted. We hope you've enjoyed the show. We hope that you will go onto your smartphone device or even onto your computer, fire it up and vote. And let's see who is going to take the next round of Share Shootout League. Thanks for watching. Good night.